Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, if, a number, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If you are listened to, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. And if the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you the truth, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved in Christ, grace to you in peace, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A man was stranded on an uncharted desert island for 20 years. When he was found, he took his party of rescuers around the island for a tour of where he had lived all alone for so long. He showed them his hut where the place where he got the fresh water, where he was growing food. And they wondered how he had kept himself sane all alone for such a long time. So he showed them this other hut. He said, this is my church. I prayed here every week, and it gave me hope. It, it kept me together. But as they were on the tour, they noticed another hut, seemingly abandoned, falling apart, further away, and they asked what that was. And he said, oh, that's my former church. I had to leave there. There was too much disagreement. It's a silly old joke. But there's nothing funny about disagreement in Christian communities. The joke rings true because most of us know faith communities and church bodies that have split over disagreement, sometimes even moving down the street and building another building. Disagreements in the Christian church can destroy the life of a community, the faith of its people. So if we're commanded to love one another, agreeing with one another seems a needed place to start. But you probably noticed that today's readings didn't say, agree with one another. When we were imagining looking at the one another teachings for Lent this year, and helping us to live more deeply into Jesus' great command to love one another, agree with one another stood out as a challenging one. It came from the last chapter of 2 Corinthians. But Romans 12 had a fuller substance around it that seemed to work better for reading to use in a worship service. Except the NRSV doesn't translate Romans 12 as it did 2 Corinthians 13, agree with one another, even though they're the same in Greek. We'll talk about that a little later. But what you actually heard read today was Paul's literal phrase. Have the same thing in mind toward one another. And it's important to get at the deeper root of that because Paul's Romans likely weren't ever going to agree, in the way we understand the word, on some issues of very deep importance. 
And in spite of that, Paul says that they need to have the same thing in mind toward one another. That that's the important thing. Because the Roman church was divided against itself. Paul's people were a mixed group of Christians. Some were Jewish. Some came to Christ from non-Jewish peoples. And there were problems. The Jewish Christians still kept the Torah. They practiced and considered themselves Jews who belonged to the body of Christ. And for them, both were inextricably joined. The Gentile Christians came to Christ from a number of religious and ethnic groups, and they cherished that they were welcomed and loved for who they were. And they too were made into the body of Christ. And Paul's trying to get these two groups to recognize that their differences and disagreements aren't the important thing. It's their identity as Christ's body that outweighs all of their differences. Paul doesn't even try to get the two groups to stop with the things that they do, with their practices. Each can practice their faith as they do, but he pleads, encourages, demands that they find that deeper unity in Christ that transcends their disagreements. That they find what we heard today, that they could have the same thing in mind toward one another. That if one group of them practices its Christian discipleship using their Jewish faith practices and another group doesn't, they still are one. Because it was and is the love of Christ that joined them, not their agreements, even on issues that both groups were convinced were of the utmost importance. It wasn't what they did or thought. It was the love of Christ that brought them together. And Paul believes they can thrive as a Christian community with these differences respected, tolerated, loved in each other. Which brings us to how the NRSV translates Romans 12. Live in harmony with one another is what our usual reading says. So have the same thing in mind toward one another becomes not agree with one another, but live in harmony with one another. And that's beautiful. I love singing in a choir, multi-part music where each part sings its own line but comes together in beauty is so deeply fulfilling to sing. And you know that when we sing here all together but in parts and God is present with us. And it's a wonderful way to enter into Paul's words because in music there can be any number of parts not all of which agree with each other at any given time. The tenors go one way, the altos go another. And each part needs to know itself, embrace it, love it, sing it. But ultimately, they all have to sing together. Harmony only happens when more than one part is heard. And no part is the right part. And there might even be times where it seems as if the parts are in conflict with each other. But the greater song, that's the same thing to keep in mind toward one another. That as we weave in and amongst ourselves in our various harmonies, we are, in fact, singing together the song of Christ. That's a challenging thing for a community to learn. But Jesus didn't create a community based on winning and losing, where some are right and some are wrong, and people leave to find other communities that agree with them. Jesus 
created a community out of his blood and his body that lived in harmony with each other, that finds truth together with each other, not in shouting and opposition. And when the song of the triune God starts weaving in and out our various harmonies, our different lines, well, then the song that we sing together as a community becomes more and more the song of creation, a song that made all things, a song that will heal all things. Have the same thing in mind toward one another. Live in harmony with one another. And listen as God's healing song emerges for our life and for the life of the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.